Uh, number one, Justin Fields uh, was named captain. Number 58, Roquan Smith. Uh, number 65, Cody Whitehair. And number 94, Robert Quinn. Uh, we, as I said the other day, we'll have an honorary captain uh, every single week. And for this week is uh, David Montgomery as uh, our honorary captain. Um, so we got started this morning working on first and second down uh, installs uh, and special teams. So uh, it was good. We had a walkthrough, just had a nice walkthrough. So we got a, a good amount of plays out there uh, just for the operation of how we're going to do things on first and second down. And then the guys are now on break, and then we'll get out there about 1.30, have a nice, uh, fast, padded practice. A little bit longer individual today because we want to focus on in, uh, techniques and fundamentals on, on Wednesdays. Um, and that will be pretty much standard throughout the course of the year. And then those will shorten up uh, on Thursday, Friday, of course. Uh, so we say start with our, sharp with our fundamentals. So I'll open up to questions from there. And you guys have put in a lot of work since camp began. What do you want to see on Sunday that the test for, for what you guys have, have done and what progress you've made? Yeah, just it's just the same, you know, progress. You know, we want to see us getting better. We want to see us uh, operating, you know, aggressive, smart football. Um, and we think we're getting better that way. But again, this is, uh, you know, a game now. It's not a preseason game, and we're excited about where that is and uh, just to get better. Coach, you um, last season with the Bulls saw obviously this team in, in uh, week six, I believe. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about Debo then? Um, you, you did a pretty good job, if I recall, in the run game overall. What did you learn about him and sort of the lessons you take to this year? Yeah, like, you know, obviously the best player in the league or one of the best players, you know, yards after contact. You know, very strong, uh, a really good route runner, uh, multiple use guy um, in the backfield, out of the backfield, lined up all over the place. So um, he's dynamic and he is deserves all the credit he, he gets. And uh, we're going to have our hands full with him. And that's what you learn. You learn what a strong, versatile player that he is. And he's what makes the NFL special, is guys like that. So uh, he's, he's a special guy. Matt, why was it important for you to have season-long captains? Yeah, I just think it's, uh, you know, a function of leadership, you know. And I tell the guys, and I told the guys when we named the captains, I always tell them this. I said the first rule of leadership is leading yourself. And those guys, uh, and I say, also say this, is that everybody in the room is a leader. You know, so we all have to do a great job of leading ourselves. We all have to lead, and we lead by modeling the behavior we wish to see in our teammates. And I think that's important, and these guys have done a good job of that. Um, and this was uh, voted on by the, te by the team. You know, we took a team vote on this, and that was exactly how it came out. And uh, so that says a lot about those guys and what their, what their peers think of them. So uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a job that is uh, – it's a it's a job that really just you got to really just focus on doing what you do best and playing great football at that at your position. And you'll lead when you, when it's called upon, but it's really about playing well. Matt, the other day you said to find Trey Lance or your scout team version of Trey Lance. You'd be looking at a bunch of different athletes, yep. um, whether they're on offense or defense. Do you do you have to do the same for Jimmy Garoppolo? Kind of not knowing how they're going to handle that quarterback position that they have two guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly have to. You know, you got to change what you're doing uh, with your game plan a little bit if they do rotate guys and move them in and out. So uh, we're we'll be prepared for that for sure. Matt, when you've been watching tape with Justin. Are there certain ways that with your defensive background you're able to kind of help, like, hey, look for this, look for this? Like, how has that dynamic worked in terms of his way of learning defenses? Yeah, I think you can help on defenses uh, on, on tells, you know, where guys are located, what they look like, what their demeanor is. I think you can do a lot of that. I think that's been helpful. You know, and also the rules, you know, the, the coverage rules that people have in certain coverages and what, what's hard on the defense, you know, based on those rules. So I think it's a uh, dual education. Uh, so to speak, you know, he's learning the offensive side, but on occasion he'll learn more in depth of what the defense is doing to help him uh, through the process. Coach, as a defensive coach, will you sit down with Luke Getzi at any time during this during the week and say, "This is how I would attack you. This is how I see you being most vulnerable." Do you have those type of conversations? Yeah, with yes, we do. Yeah, we have those conversations, and those are always good conversations. A lot of times, those come up in the meetings. You know, we're we're talking, we're going through a game plan part portion, and they'll come up in the meetings. We'll just discuss it, and sometimes they even come up during the quarterback meeting. We'll see something in there, and 
and start discussing it. Like I said before, it's an open forum in there where everybody's trying to learn and interact with each other, and it's, and it's been good. It's voted by the teammates. Okay. Yep. Justin, what have you seen in him in terms of leadership uh, since you got here? Uh, just taking every step that, that we've asked him to take, you know, and uh, talk about modeling the behavior you wish to see. He's a great teammate. You know, he is a guy that, that works with others uh, and uh, wants to soak in everything and has gotten better. And he's done it through his work ethic. And, you know, he's obviously very intelligent, you know, which helps him along the way. But uh, he's been a great teammate. One of the things you wanted to work on this preseason as a new coach was putting your system in place. You know, how do you feel? How effective you were? What were some of the take-home lessons you learned? Yeah, it's a work in progress. You know, this is our first year together, and we're getting better. You know, we could see week uh, preseason game one to three. You know, uh, from spring to training camp. You know, all those little pockets you look at. I think we're getting better. You know, you can see us playing a little bit harder, uh, a little bit smarter, uh, a little bit more aggressive. And uh, we're just trying to take a step in the right direction. So are you a grass expert? And how, what went into the shift at Soldier Field? Because no other coach has really done this, to my knowledge. Yeah, it was. Uh, this has been planned uh, for quite some time. And uh, we, we feel it's going to be a nice surface. You know, we think it's going to be a fast surface, which I think lends to, our, uh, to help us out. Uh, Ken Barak, our grounds guy who's been here forever, is outstanding. And I've been working with him. And he is a... Uh, just an outstanding man, first of all, and he just does an outstanding job. You know, here at Hallis Hall, obviously you guys see our fields here have been sweet. And, uh, you know, so we're trying to take that there and we'll see what happens. You said, you said a fast surface. Soldier Field hasn't been known as a fast surface in the past. Is that a fundamental shift in the way you guys do that? Yeah, we want a fast team. You know, we want a long, fast, athletic football team. So I think that lends to our uh, advantage. And how involved were the discussions in, in trying to, to get this – moving in that direction. To yeah, I'm not going to go deep into it. Like I said, I'm not a grass uh, expert, but uh, it was, it was uh, you know, they said they were going to do some things. We talked about it, and then they ended up doing it. So it's, it's you know, not super deep. You had, you, had a lot of, oh, you had experience with that surface, though? Have you had experience with that? With this one? Yeah, yeah I believe, I want to say, I believe it's the same one we had at my last place in the practice field. So uh, it's very similar to that. It's a hybrid grass, so. That, that does well in cold weather. Yeah, you've taken over. There have been obviously a lot of changes all over the roster, all over this building, right down to the grass. So as you head into like the first game, how do you feel about your fingerprints on this version of the Bears? Uh, I feel good about it. I feel good about it. It's not just mine. It's, it's our whole football teams. You know, I have a great staff um, that we've put together that has uh, been a part of, of this and also has bought into what we're, what we're doing. Uh, the style which we play, and then the players. You know, you got to think about the players because they're the guys, the product on the field that's going to be doing it. So uh, the buy-in's been great there, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. It's going to be tested this week, and uh, we're excited where that's going to go. Manager, with Roquan Smith, with Roquan being oh, sorry. voted as a captain, how do you view that in light of him holding out and asking to be traded and kind of being in a standoff with the team still? Yeah, I, I don't even look at it that way. I look at it as football is football, you know, and that's the that's the business side of it. And like I said in the beginning, that you know, since uh, him and I always talk, it's always about football, and it's and it's going to kind of continue to be that way. And uh, you know, he he is a man's man, and he is a, he is a heck of a football player. So we're excited for him to be a captain. When you talk about leading uh, leading others by you know modeling what you want for your, uh, yep. by yourself, um, so you feel like from a football standpoint, Roquan has done that since. He's no been question. No question. Uh, on the grass, man, he's been great. He's been great. And he's been great in the locker room. And he's been great with the coaches. You know, it's just that the negotiations didn't work out the way, way he wanted to and the way we wanted to. It didn't go the way we wanted. But in the same regard, he's been A1 on the football side, coaches' side, teammate side, all that. So it's been it's been really good. And after three preseason games, is, is regular season game management – Still an X factor for you. Do, do, do you know how good you'll be at it, or is that something where you kind of learn as you go along and, and kind of figure it out? Because even some of the best coaches struggle on game. On no, game. that's good. That's a really good question, and we're continuing to work on that. We've been working on that uh, since the last preseason game. We're continuing to educate and go through scenarios, and uh, that's going to be something we do, we do the whole season because you know the changes. You know they're like you know. Somebody once said that, it's, you know, those situations are like snowflakes. They're all different, right? So, you know, time, timeouts, you know, score, all that, field position. So I think it's important that we keep educating ourselves so we do a good job on game day. Is the pressure of the moment that anything you kind of account for? Or, you know, is that something you just have to go through? You know, making, 
Making a decision when you have to do it in a split second. Yeah, I think you just got to really uh, stay ahead of it. You stay ahead of the play. So you stay ahead of what's going to happen next. Uh, you don't wait for the situation to just show up. You stay ahead of the situation. Then you're more. it's more manageable that way uh, to make a, a good a decision, what you see as a good decision in the moment. And, and it, during your, your days as a coordinator, what lessons did you learn over time about how to best challenge young, inexperienced quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways to do that. You know, obviously the obvious ways is, you know, pressure. You know, you, uh, you want to pressure those guys, and I think that's uh, what every defensive coordinator would say. And then disguise. You know, you want to be able to disguise and move your coverages and and how much you need to do that with a young guy sometimes. I think you outthink yourself sometimes a little bit. Uh, but I would say those two things. What you talk to you about Lance in your, in your early studies at Oakland? Yeah, a great athlete. You know, he's, he's really good. Uh, yeah, I think he has a good handle of the offense. Um, I think that's a really good offense for him. Um, and I think that they'll utilize it in the right way. I, I really respect those coaches over there uh, on both sides. And they do a nice job of coaching their team, and they have, and they've had great success. Two more. By the fact that the 49ers had an opportunity to draft him and didn't. As a coach, do you try to regulate any sort of emotions a player might have against a specific opponent? Is it a good thing, a bad thing? Do you step in to, to try and make sure it, it's. Yeah, amazing? motivation is funny, isn't it? You know, sometimes, you know, different people are motivated a certain, you know, a certain way. And I think if you, if you have that under control, you know, you know, being in self control and use that the right way. To motivate you, I think there's nothing wrong with that, and that could be whatever. That could be anything. What did you learn about the way Justin is self-motivated? Uh, I just think he's trying to be the best quarterback that he can be, you know, and he's he's proven that every single day since I've been here.